Hi everyone, this is Ravi Gupta. Welcome to Engineering Adda. So today I will be <coughs> discussing how we can use my batteries in the Spring Boot. Okay, so what is my batteries? First, the question is this. Okay, the my batteries is a ORM tool. What is ORM tool? It's an object relational mapping tool. So you might be heard about the term called Hibernate GPA. So Hibernate is a ORM tool, okay. So that is <coughs> also uh, my batteries is looking like, okay. So it simply helps us in mapping the object into the databases. So uh, why my batteries then? If the JPA or the Hibernate is already there, then why my batteries we are going to use? So there is a reason behind it. So my batteries is a kind of ORM tool that is used to mapping with the database in the Spring Boot. And why my batteries not JPA? Because it is a light and a speedy in execution of the SQL query than the JPA or Hibernate, I would say. So this is the reason why we are uh, discussing my batteries now. Okay, so I will be creating one uh, simple Spring Boot application, uh, having some uh, starter dependency into it, and then. Uh, try to include my batteries instead of the JPA and then try to uh, try to insert some record or try to get some uh, data from the database. So I will be creating one simple MVC pattern uh, application using the Spring Boot and then with the help of my batteries will map those things into the database and then try to uh, perform some operations. So yeah, so let's start with that thing. Uh, I will open like I already have opened the IntelliJ in me. So I just creating one uh, simple application. So it's a spring boot with uh, my batteries. And then try to include the Lombok here and then try to include some spring web and mysql as a database driver and uh, we need to have the my batteries framework okay for the database uh, mapping okay so so database that i am using here is a mysql database uh, so that is why i just included the mysql driver there okay and uh, so let me walk through the database that I am going to use so it is a MySQL database that I have already opened. I opened the MySQL bench. So here I am going to create one database. So let's say, yeah, you can click on this icon and then it will ask to create a new database. So let's say it's a test uh, database, apply, and then yeah, apply again. So it is created. Here you can see inside this uh, test database. Yeah. So you have to select it. How you can select? Double click on this, and then it will be selected. Go to the table. You you can see no table is there, right? So simply I'm going to create one table inside it uh, with the name of user, and then uh, I already have some query here. If you need this query, I can ping into the comment section. So I have already selected. Okay, so let's create a table with the name user and it is having uh, ID. Okay, and it is having name salary uh, and add is the primary key for it. So let's select it and run it. So you can see uh, the table is created here. Uh, go to this database and refresh it. So yeah, you can see this table is there. Okay. I just try to insert something into this table and then uh, we'll see how uh, like how the records is inserted and all. And then we'll try to go to the IntelliJ and then try to develop some code with the help of my batteries. Okay. So I'm going to insert some record into it. So 
So yeah, I'm going to insert this record into the table. So yeah, you can see record is inserted. I'm going to change the ID and then try to insert some different record. Uh, let's say Rahul. Let the salary be same and try to insert it. So yeah, it is also inserted. So here you can see I have inserted a couple of records. So here you can see those things. Okay. Now coming back to the IntelliJ, uh, we have created this application. Okay, and then let me create couple of the packages and then try to uh, write the codes. So let create a mapper, model, and controller. and controller sorry guys just missed it why it is coming here okay so it is coming here let me create here controller so in model i'm going to use uh, going to write the user class and users should be having those uh, ID and name and salary. So private integer and ID private string name private double salary. And uh, since I'm using Lambok, so I, I'm not going to create the getter and setter because using the data annotations, we can directly uh, invoke the getter and setter here. Similarly, for the all argument and no argument constructor, it's just we don't need anything. Coming to the mapper, I'm going to create an interface called user mapper, and there we'll write some. First of all, we need to annotate this with the annotation called mapper. So that uh, whenever we try to run the application, it will it, it will like see it like a mapper class. Okay, recognize it like a mapper class. So that is why we are keeping it as a mapper. Now uh, I will create here one method which is returning the list of all the users so list of user import it it should be a public type public list get all users okay and okay and then Here we need to write the query to select all the user. So it is a select. And the query should be select star from user, which is a database. So it will fire up this query from here. When we are going to use it, uh, when whenever we are going to use this method inside the controller class. So coming back to the controller, I'm just going to create one user controller and then Here I can see uh, we have to annotate it with the rest template and all right rest controller request mapping and here you can also provide some mapping like say API and here I'm just going to use the mapper class to call that method so I'm just auto wiring that thing private user mapper user mapper and then I'm going to write one method which will return which will be use uh, the user mapper method that we have created which is fetching out all the all the users from the database okay so for that I'm going to create one method 
get all users and since it is uh, yeah it will be the list of users and here it's a get mapping one so I'm just going to annotate it with the get mapping and now I will be calling that method with the help of mapper and simply return it <coughs> sorry guys so we have what we have did is we have created the table inserted some record into the table and we have created the backend uh, which is of user type we have created the repository we have created the model as a user mapper as a user mapper and user controller from where we are going to hit the api and get the details from the database so uh, before going to run this application we have to connect with the database right so for that i'm just going to change the server name server port so making it 9095 and we have to provide the username and password and url and all so for that username spring data url and then spring uh, where is that data source name and similar way we have to change for the password okay so my username is root uh, password is ravi1998 and url we have to provide the jdbc url that is i have here okay and uh, then the database name should be there okay where is that sorry guys so yeah and the database that we have created was the test data base you can see that what database yeah it is a test database that we have created so in the configuration we need to in the configuration in the URL side we need to provide this database name where we are going to connect this is the port number on which my mysql is locally up and uh, yeah this is a JDBT, jdbc mysql url that we need to provide here sim i'm providing the username and the password of that database and this is the port number on which application will be up and running so i'm going to run this application now and let's see what is happening so if it is successfully connected with the database then we'll try to hit the get api and then we'll see if all the records is coming or not so you can see it's already in use so i'm going to change the name of uh, sorry the port number make it 9094 and then try to run it again i have opened couple of applications so that is why it is occupied okay so it is up on the port number 9094 now coming to the uh, <coughs> browser we can go to this localhost 9094 and then api okay 9094 and then api then get all users i would say let me check what was the api that we have created so go to the controller and we can see api and then all users so it's a simple one API and all all users now oh, it's all sorry all users okay let me hit it okay it is not coming localhost API and all users okay let me check uh, where is that uh, sorry okay some we have hit the url and then some 
some exception is coming local host and this yes access denied for the user using password yes initialization mm -hmm. root starting why it is saying so Uh, so I was getting some error, but now it is fixed. Uh, you can see the application is up on 9094 and coming to this uh, <coughs> Postman or uh, directly you can come to this uh, browser and see <coughs> I will hit this URL. Okay, so it is 9094 all API users So hit this URL you can see yeah. The name of uh, the t uh, Peoples in the table is coming right? So if you want to insert some more details into the table, you can come here and then try to insert it and then we'll see. So where was that? Let me check. Yeah, so I'm going to insert like three as a Rajan. And let it be save, insert it, sorry, select. So it is inserted now coming back to this and we'll try to hit it again. So you can see Rajan is also there, right? So it is working fine. So this is how my bet is we can use it into the Spring Boot instead of the JPA. Uh, so we need to write the query for that, right? So if you are using the uh, my bet is then explicitly you need to write the query. How I written for the select one. So you can see here how we have written for the select one. So similar way you need to write the query for that. Here you can see, right? Select this all. So similar way you need to write it and then you have to uh, use those things. Okay, so Thanks for the video guys. Uh, let me know if you need something else and please subscribe my channel